What's up YouTube? I'm Mr. No Name or Max as people know me in the real world and today I am bringing you guys a 4v4 MLG variant uh, S&D competitive gameplay and yeah I hope you guys enjoy that in the background. So today's commentary topic was actually given to me by somebody on Twitter because they asked me a question and instead of responding to them by giving them like a thousand tweets I decided to make a video response to it because it will also help a lot of you guys out and basically this guy was asking me out how to keep a team together like how to get a team to stay together for a long time so that you can have the chemistry and everything you need to uh to go to LAN events and such so this guy's twitter is uh at exotic crack x draw and i'll put that in the description below if you want to go follow him all right so there's uh, for, for first of all my kind of qualifications on this is um myself uh plizix and quaddy I, I keep wanting to call them by their real names, but I know it's probably better for you guys if I call them by their gamer tag, so I have to think for a second. But anyway, we have been a solid three-man team for probably around four months, maybe more, maybe a little less. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, we've gone through several fourths during that time period. Uh, we're currently with Hectic at the moment, but you know we have stayed a solid three-man team, and we know how to get through the the rough times we have the chemistry and everything so that's just kind of the qualifications we have i know a lot of teams you know they don't last more than like a month so that that's just kind of my qualifications it's not like we've been together for like 10 years or anything but you know it, it's it's fairly good in the gaming world so there's basically two things i have to say about this to uh how to keep a team together for a long period of time and it's it's all about starting out correctly by and, and the two points are picking the right teammates and then solidifying the team chemistry together. So the first thing is going to take the longest, and that's picking the right teammates. So there's several things to look for, and the first one that I thought of was maturity. So what I mean by this is the player that you're looking at picking up needs to be mature. Like, they need to not be disrespectful. Now, I understand in gaming... Uh, being disrespectful to a certain limit is acceptable and it's used as mind games such as teabagging or putting a smiley face on the wall or something after you kill him or whatever. Uh, you know, you can do that, but don't be over the top. Don't be sending them hate messages or anything. And also, they need to be able to take a loss. You know, if they're not mature in their losses, then that's not good. If they're over there yelling at everybody, it's it's not going to work out well. When I, Also, by maturity, I also mean the age somewhat uh, there are exceptions but generally i would not accept anybody into a team that is younger than 15 simply due to the fact that they just haven't matured enough yet most of the time there are exceptions but that's just my general guidelines for that next thing is consistency so how do they play from day to day or game to game you know I, i've seen a lot of teams they make the mistake of they try a whole bunch of people in one day and they let them play like one or two games well, obviously, people can have a really bad game or a really good game, and that's not going to tell you anything. You need to see how they do over a period of time. I would say at least three days. Give them at least three days to uh, to prove themselves or unprove themselves. Because, you know, I've seen teams try and pick somebody up just because they had a good game, and I've seen people be like, no, nope, we don't want you just because they had a bad game. And they could be, like, the best player ever, and you just completely passed up on them. So that's just something to look out for. The next thing is the location of your teammates. So, first of all, I hope most of you realize this. I think most of you do. Actually, I think all of you do. Do not team internationally. Now, I'm not saying you can't have an organization with international people, but for your competitive roster, don't go international. Don't have a European on your team if you're in America. That's that's not going to work at all. You're, one of you is going to have an awful connection. Now, on top of that, I also mean, if you're in America at least, you know, don't have an East Coast and West Coast member. You can have, you know, East Coast and Central or West Coast and Mountain Time or something like that, you know, just kind of fairly close together, which is what we do. We have uh, East Coast and Central. So just just kind of be careful with the locations because you don't want to get too much lag because of that. And also, if you get too far apart, the uh, the time frames won't work out. And that's actually the next thing, which is what time frame are they on each day or almost every day? So if you've got a player who can be on in the mornings, that's great. But if everybody else gets on the e in the evenings, that's not so great. It's not going to work out. You need to be able to get on at the same time 
all the time. So, you know, if you try somebody out at night or something and they're like, oh, well, normally I'm not on at night, but that's the only time you can play, you need to know that. So you, that's something you need to ask them. What time are you available? And then if they're not available, see if you can try and change. Because always try and work it out if at all possible. That's one of the things. You got to try and work around situations that arise. All right, the next thing is the player's skill. And by this, I mean how good are they at the moment. Uh, the next thing I'll talk about is talent. But bas basically for skill, you know, how good are they right now? Are they really bad or are they really good or are they somewhere in the middle? You know, what what's their skill level compared to you? And the next thing, like I said, was talent. And this is raw talent. I'm talking about how good they could become or... Um, you know, what, what's their potential, and just how naturally good at the game are they? You know, are they keen? Are they aware of everything that's going on? Can they predict opponents? Are they just lacking in gun skill? You know, th that kind of thing. You got to look into that. The next thing is uh, the potential chemistry that could build. So, obviously, if you've got somebody on your team, this is an extreme example, but let's say you've got somebody on your team that is a uh, racist or something and they don't like black people and then you have a black person on your team well, that's not gonna work now you shouldn't have somebody who's racist on your team but you know something like that you that, that that's an extreme case but basically if you've got somebody who hates somebody else on your team it, it's not gonna work so you need to be able to work together um your personalities need to match up you know you need to be able to joke around with each other and this kind of goes into age group as well maybe you don't have a 40 year old on your team and then a 15 year old the the humor doesn't cross that much age usually so uh just kind of you know keep try, try and build that chemistry try and have the same kind of personalities or you can have different personalities but make sure they can mesh together well the next thing is the learning curve so if the player is potentially bad, or even if they are really good, how quickly do they learn when you tell them something? If you tell them, hey, um, I noticed you were doing this, try doing this instead. Like if they were just rushing straight in, we'd be like, hey, just hang back for a second and try that, play a little more passive. Do they take what you say and they learn from it and they instantly improve? Or do they take a little while? Or do they just completely ignore it and don't change their play style at all? That's something to consider. You need somebody who's going to be able to learn. Next thing is the dedication of the players. So, by this I mean, what are they willing to do to go pro? In, in my case, that's kind of our, our goals. But, you know, how dedicated to the team are they? Are they willing to pull money out of their pockets to invest in this? Are they willing to put aside other social activities to get on and everything? So um, that's just something else to you know kind of question them about. The next thing is you need to have similar goals. You don't want somebody who's in it for fun and then somebody who's, who's in it to go pro on the same team. It's not going to work. But you need to have similar goals. Next thing is um, what other activities are the player is the player involved in? Um, if they have you know like a girlfriend and they're in football and basketball, swimming, track, whatever, if they're in a whole bunch of things, it may not work out to where they can really play. They might be really tired, or they may just not even have any time to play at all. And I, I know that's kind of unfair because I am involved in school a lot because I have higher level courses and I've been out a lot, so I have a lot of homework and I don't get as much time to play. But, you know, that's just something to look for when you're trying to find your teammates. Next thing is the internet connection. And I'm guilty of this. My internet connection is pretty bad. Um,. It was a two megabyte connection until recently. Now it's a 10 megabyte. I'm paying for 30, but I only get 10 to the Xbox. And the way that you actually check this is um, you can put in Black Ops 2 and you can go to the options and then press the back button next to the glowy Xbox thing in the center. I don't really know what to call it. It probably has a term and I'm just oblivious to it, but the back button's to the left of that. You click it and it'll tell you your bandwidth in kilobytes and then you can just convert it to megabytes. So yeah, um, next thing is can the player handle criticism and by this i mean constructive criticism nobody should have to go through that hateful criticism where they're like oh i hate you you're awful why did you do that and they're just yelling at you constantly no um you need to be able to dish out criticism correctly and you need to be able to accept criticism correctly so you know just be able to take it be like okay yeah i'll try that next time or something 
All right, so into the second part is, and that was um, how to solidify the team. So the main thing is building the chemistry and letting the, your team members know the real you. You need to be able to be completely honest with them. You need to let them know who you are. Um, you know, honesty is the best policy. By doing this, you know, they will probably like you more, or if they don't like you, at least they find out sooner. So, you know, it's just something that that's really how you solidify the team. Also, you know, playing together a lot, uh, you know, uh, building the in-game chemistry as well as the outside game chemistry. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I hope to help. Uh, make sure you go check out the guy's Twitter that I was talking about. I'll have it in the, in the description because um, it was a great question. So as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, then let me know what I can do better next time. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.